Harvard Law professor and leading American advocate for Israel, Alan Dershowitz, was visiting the country this week. Besides for meeting with his old friends like President Shimon Peres and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Dershowitz is here to receive the Begin Award for Honor from the Menachem Begin Heritage Center. Jerusalem Post editor-in-chief Steve Lindy sat down with Professor Dershowitz to discuss issues in Israel, the U.S., and the Middle East. What are your views of the dramatic changes um, taking place in the Arab world and especially in Egypt? It's completely unclear. Anybody who claims to know what the future of the Arab Spring or the Arab Cold Winter holds is fooling you. There's no way of possibly knowing. Um, all we know is that the primary winners of the Egyptian election are not only anti-Israel, but their whole platform is virulently anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish. And it can't be good for world peace. It can't be good for uh, peace prospects and for relations. Uh, and I think the United States makes a terrible decision when it confuses a kind of superficial democracy with real democracy. Oh, the vote may very well have been fair, but the vote in 1932 was very fair in Germany as well. Um, but it brought to power somebody who then denied everybody their rights. And uh, it may not happen as quickly in Egypt, but I'm not optimistic that the rights of Christians will be preserved in Egypt, that the relationship between Israel and Egypt will continue in a positive way. Um, I think one has to be very, very cautious. Do you think that the Obama administration should be changing its policy on the Middle East? I was shocked that my Secretary of Defense, uh, Leon Panetta, foolishly said, well, just sit down and negotiate. And he said it to the Israelis as if the Israelis don't want to negotiate. Let him say it to the Palestinians. The reason the Palestinians are not negotiating today is largely the fault of the United States. President Obama got out ahead of the Palestinians and really was the one who insisted that uh, the Israelis have conditions, uh, freezes, before the Palestinians can come to the negotiating table. I wish that President Obama would encourage both sides to negotiate with no preconditions. On the other hand, I don't think that Barack Obama is an enemy of Israel. He's done some good things in terms of security. Uh, it's a mixed situation. And uh, the, the great fear by among many American supporters of Israel, Jews and Christians alike, is that a second Obama term uh, could be more dangerous for Israel than the first Obama term was. So everybody's considering their options. What is your position uh, on Iran, and do you th think the Obama administration should change its tactics regarding Iran? It has to be made an important part of American foreign policy that Iran will never, never be allowed to develop nuclear weapons. If Iran develops nuclear weapons on President Obama's watch, he will be regarded by history as the Neville Chamberlain of the 21st century. Neville Chamberlain also had health reform, was a very, very good uh, prime minister, other than the fact that he failed to recognize the greatest evil of the 20th century. And if President Obama allows Iran to develop nuclear weapons, it will be a disaster. Fortunately, Secretary Gates, who was probably the worst modern Secretary of Defense, uh, and who took the uh, military option off the table, unequivocally took it off the table, is gone. Uh, I'm hoping that Panetta will be an improvement. But the United States government is speaking with many voices. Obama seems to be saying that there will be no nuclear weapons developed in Iran. On the other hand, uh, others in the administration seem to be suggesting that the United States will have to learn to live with a nuclear Iran. That would be a disaster. You cannot live with a nuclear Iran. So what is your best advice to the Israeli government and Prime Minister Netanyahu? I do think that Israel should do everything necessary to bring the Palestinians to the negotiating table and make a generous offer of the kind they've already made and let the world see that the Palestinians are the ones rejecting the offer. I think the world has to see that Israel is prepared to make a compromise peace. Israel is prepared to accept the two-state solution. Israel is prepared to make te terribly painful territorial compromises about areas that are the heritage of the Jewish uh, people. I'm not saying anything new here. This is the position of this government. Uh, and Israel should make it possible 
without concerns for its own domestic policies, to bring the Palestinians to the table, let them say no. Let them be the ones to reject a deal. Maybe they will say yes, that would even be better. Thank you very much, Professor Dershowitz, for joining us today. Thank you, I'll give you my card. Perfect, good, thank you.